A digital signature confirms the identity of the person who sent the workbook and is issued by a certification authority or CA, a trusted third party that is, and contains a serial number, digital signature of issuing authority, expiration dates, name and copy of certificate holder's public key so the user can then verify that that certificate is authentic. And so once the signature is attached to the document, it can't be modified without first removing the digital ID. So it doesn't prevent anybody from removing it. It simply means that if it's not there, then it may not be from the person who you think it is and or changes have been made. And there's no way to know or find out what changes have been made. And In that case, you want to contact the person and ask them if they'll digitally sign it again because one of the three things have happened. Again, either the sender forgot to sign it or someone else who's pretending to be the person that is trying to reach you is doing it without verification or it was intercepted and the document was changed. Now there are two ways you can go about digitally signing your document or your workbook here. You can do it visible or invisible. Now invisible sounds kind of kooky. It just means that it's not readily available to look at, but you can pull it up in a single click. In any case, let me go ahead and show you how to sign it invisible first. And to do that, you want to come up here, click on the File tab, go Backstage, Info Select by Default. Just come down here and click on Protect Workbook and go down and it's right there. Add a digital signature. It ensures the integrity of the workbook by adding an invisible digital signature. Now before you go ahead and click on it, if you haven't installed a digital ID from a trusted third party, then when you click on it, it may allow you to still go ahead and sign it, in which case if it does, it's only valid for that computer. If you send it off to somebody else, it'll say it's not valid or there's an error because it's only for that computer. In any case, you can see that I'm signing it as issued by Komodo, and it's got the information there. If you have more than one digital ID, you can go ahead and click Change and then choose another. I just have the one. And you can go ahead and click here to view the certificate properties. And there it is. It's very generic and I didn't add anything special to it. So when I do digitally sign it, it's not going to have my name, just an email address, in which case it's going to say Digital Signer Unknown. I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead and click Okie Dokie and click Cancel. So. Having said that, when you do sign up through a third party, you want to go through it very explicitly and detailed so when you do sign it, the person who gets it can get all the details they can. So to be able to find what third parties are available, let's go ahead and click Cancel, go to the front stage, click on the Insert tab, come over here and go to the text group, and go ahead and click on the Signature line. And by the way, this is the visible signature, but we'll cover that after the invisible. What I wanted to show you was the Add Signature Services or what services are available. Click on it to open up Internet Explorer. And then you can see Find Digital ID or Digital Certificate Services. Phew, say that really fast. Let's go ahead and scroll down. And these are the ones that says you can use or they recommend, Microsoft does, like DocuSign, Komodo, which is the one that I used. Go ahead and click on their link, read more about it. If you like it, then go ahead and follow all the instructions to the T so you can install it correctly because if not, then you run into issues like, well, I ran through mine and my digital ID just says it's unknown and that's not good. In any case, I'll show you that. And then go ahead and close out, install it on your computer, and then to digitally sign it, the invisible way, let's go backstage again, click on File, Info selected by default, click on Protect Workbook, down to Add a Digital Signature, and again, mine comes from Komodo, so let's go back to the top here. You can see additional information about what you are signing, and it talks about the contents of this document. The following additional information is stored with the signature, which is the system date and time, the version, office version, Excel version, and so on. Click OK. Then the commitment type means what's the purpose of this? Well, we want to create or we created this document. And then the purpose for me signing the document, you can type in whatever you want. Maybe it's classified. And then to include information about the signer, click on the details button. And I don't have that much information about me. I could add a little bit more here. There's the title, CED for Chief Executive Dude. And you can add the production place, address, zip code, country, click OK. And then when you're ready, go ahead and click Sign. Your signature has been successfully saved with the document. If the document is changed, your signature will become invalid. OK. So you can see it does a couple of things. It says here in the backstage it was signed and it should not be edited. If anyone attempts to tamper with it, the signature will become invalid. So it doesn't lock them down and say you can't work on it. It just says if you do, then it doesn't come with the signature. So when you forward it on to somebody else who it was intended for in the first place, 
they don't see a signature, then they hopefully won't accept it and realize for what it is and just trash it. And you can see that this workbook has been marked as final to discourage editing. We'll talk about the feature marked as final. It's just preventing you from making any changes to the document, and that can be easily removed. In any case, we'll talk about that again in a later training video. Let's go ahead and click back so we can go to the front stage. And you can see it says marked as final. The author has marked it as final to discourage editing. It doesn't prevent editing. You can go ahead and click on edit anyways. But before I do that, if I come down here and I type in anything, can't do it. You can see up at the top in the title bar, it's read only. And to be able to view the signature, you can come down here. And on the status bar, it says the document contains signatures. Go ahead and click on it. opens up the task pane. It's from an unknown signer. Like I said, I didn't sign it up through Komodo and follow all their instructions to be able to get this correctly. In which case, again, it's not Microsoft as near as I can tell. It's the way I had it set up through the third party CA. In any case, you can go ahead and right click on it to bring up the signature details. And there it is. A valid signature. The signed content has not changed and the signer's certificate is valid. Signature type created this document, it's classified, it's by Komodo, go ahead and click on view to view it. The certificate is intended for the following purposes, proves your identity to remote computer, protects email messages, go ahead and get details, and the certification path, which the user trust network from Komodo, and it's my email address, and it says the status is OK. Go ahead and click OK and close out, and by the way, let me go ahead and close out of here because when you digitally sign a document and you close out of it, the next person that opens it up, even if it's you, let me go ahead and close out. And there it is on the desktop. Double click to open it up. It'll then show you the option besides the mark as final feature, but the signatures. So they say it's invisible, and this is the invisible part. It's not very invisible, is it? But you can go ahead and click on it to view it. It is as far as being hidden behind a task pane that pops open when you click on to view the signatures. I can see that being invisible. In any case, there we go again. And like I said, you can either right click on it or click on the drop down arrow. Still get the signature details. You can see additional information that was collected. Click on the link. And we saw that before we signed it. System date and time when it was signed. Also the office version 16, which is 2016. And then you can see information about the signer which is Chief Executive Dude, sweet, click OK. And then when you're done, if you're like, oh, OK, this is fine. I need to make changes to it now that I got it. So to make changes to it, you have to either, well, right click on it and say remove the signature or just come up here and click on edit anyways. But before you do that, let's click on the Home tab to expand it. You see how all the commands have been faded? That's in the marked as final feature, so you can't edit it there can't click on anything because again it prevents the edit until you remove the digital signature so when I click off let's go ahead and click on edit anyways and remove the signature are you okay with that say yes signature has been removed click okie dokie it's been removed here I can now go ahead and edit it I no longer see the certificate icon in the status bar down below and so I can then go ahead and make changes to it and then when I'm ready after I approve and make some edits digitally sign it and send it back and then to add the visible signature line, as opposed to the invisible non-signature line, come up here and click on the Insert tab, go to the Text Group, and you can click on the icon Signature Line, and you can see when I hover over it, it gives you a preview in the pop-up, or you can click on the drop-down arrow and select Microsoft Office Signature Line. Either way, it'll work. When you click on it, it brings up the signature setup. Go ahead and type in the signer's name. If you're setting this up for your boss to sign, then go ahead and type in their name and it's going to be me, and then the signer's title. You don't have to add one, but I'll type in CED for Chief Executive Dude, and then the signer's email address if you'd like, instructions to the signer. You can leave it as is before signing the document. Verify the content you are signing is correct, or remove it, add something. And then below that, you can actually allow the signer to add comments in the sign dialog, and then show sign date and signature line. Sounds good. Click OK, and there it is. Click and drag to move it around. To reposition the signature line box and then to resize it if it's too small or maybe it's too big for you go ahead and hover over one of the circles the resizing handles until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions then click and drag to make it huge click and drag to move it around and then when you're done go ahead and close out and then be sure to save your work hand it off to your boss they double click to open it up 
And then it says up here, this document needs to be signed. Oh, that's me. Okay. How do you sign it? Well, you just go ahead and double click on the X here or the image that contains the signature line with the X. And then as far as instructions go, before they sign it, they can start up at the top, see additional information about what they're signing, click on it, and it contains the Office version, the Excel version. OK, click OK. And then it says before signing this document, verify that the content you are signing is correct. OK, so we'd close out and read it through and go, OK, that sounds good or that looks good. And then type your name below or click Select Image to select a picture to use as your signature. So you can go ahead and type in your name as your signature. Or if you've got an image that you scanned onto the computer here, go ahead and click on Select Image, browse for it, and then pull it in. Or better yet, you can actually get kind of fun here. If you want to do it this way, you can type in anything that you want to search for that represents your image, like the ghost. Hit Enter. And here's a happy ghost. Let's go ahead and insert him, and I just signed it. Well, I haven't signed it, but that's what's going to represent my signature here on the line with the X. But I need to finish off, like, what's the commitment type? Well, I approve this document. Then the purpose for signing it, if you have one. And then down below, to include information about the signer, click on the details. And then you can go ahead and type in the signer's role, address. I'm going to click on cancel. And then if you have more than one certificate of authority that you use to sign, go ahead and click Change. I only have one, so that worked out well. Go ahead and click OK, and then click Sign. Your signature has been successfully saved with this document. If the document is changed, your signature will become invalid. OK. So now it's signed, and you can see up here that marked as final has been set, so nobody can make any changes to it without first editing it. If they edit it, then they remove the ghost. The signature is no longer valid. And so they can go ahead and click on View the Signatures when somebody gets it. And then they can come over here and click on the drop down arrow to get the signature details. And they can see the ghost, approve the document, see additional signing information. As we just saw before we signed it, click Okie Dokie and then see information about the signer. I didn't add the signer's role or title, but there's the time. Close out, close and then click on the drop down arrow again or you can right click to get the same shortcut menu go down to signature setup to see how it was set up looks good close out it brings it up that way or you can close out of it you can also right click on the signature line and go down to signature detail setup or remove signature or double click on it to bring up the signature details close out or come down below in the status bar and you can see the little certificate there it says this document contains signatures. Click on it to open up the signatures window. Cool. There's a lot of ways to go about doing this. In any case, when you're done, let me go ahead and close out. Right click on it to remove the signature, and you'll permanently remove the signature. Are you okay with that? Yes. Signature has been removed. Click OK. Now I can edit it, and I just got a blank X there with no signature next to it. You can go ahead and delete it, or click and drag and move it out of the way and then make your changes if you need to make additional changes. And then if it's still you, then go ahead and double click on it and go through the same process to resign it and send it off. Now, when you digitally sign a document, where does that certificate come from? Where is it stored? In other words, if you got two or three or you inserted one by accident and you want to remove it, let me go ahead and show you. Just hit the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of that signature line because that's annoying me. It's not signed, and I'm not going to sign it. In any case, let's go ahead and close out, save our work. Go ahead and open up the computer, double-click on it. For me, it's on my desktop. For you, you can access it if you're using Windows 8 or Windows 10, another way. But what we're looking at is getting to the C drive. Double-click on that to open it up. Go down and double-click on Users. And of all the users that can log in on my computer, the one that I'm currently logged in under, the name that is, is Training. Double-click on Training. And there, you probably won't see it, is the app data folder. And you can tell it's faded. So by default, it's not viewable. If you want to be able to see it, then I'm going to hit the Alt key on the keyboard to bring up the menu here. Go ahead and click on Tools. Go down to Folder Options. And you'll learn all about this in my Windows training video. Go ahead and click on the View tab. And say that you want to show hidden files, folders, and drives. And the reason why they hide them is because eh, you got some more sensitive stuff in there that, that if you accidentally change it or delete them or move them around, it can mess up your computer. So stay on the path. If you don't, your computer could turn to stone. Oh, that's a nice thought. Let's go ahead and close out of that. So there's my disclaimer. Once you show that hidden folder, 
Again, it's not a folder that you normally see, but it's hidden by default, so it gives you a faded icon here of the folder called App Data. Double click to open it up, go down and double click on the roaming folder, and then go down and double click on Microsoft, and then go ahead and find your system certificates folder, double click on that, and then find the My folder, double click, and then double click on certificates. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and have to cover this up. I don't want you to see the whole key here. That wouldn't be good. But there's the key. All you have to do is go ahead and right click on it and go down to delete and it's gone. So you can pick and choose what you want to use or if you made a mistake you want to get rid of it. Well, that's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.